so I have a special relationship with Jurassic Park. Michael Crichton was a student at my medical, Harvard Medical School. The book, which is what I obviously was exposed to before the movie, um, had in it the, the, a, a big chunk of DNA that I had worked on as a graduate student. Um, and I thought that was amusing. He had, he had mangled it a little bit, but it was basically intact and it was not of a dinosaur. It was of a bacterial plasmid. So that was fun, uh, figuring that out because he didn't say that anywhere in the book in the acknowledgments or anything. He didn't say it came from, you know, a Harvard graduate student. The third connection is his fictional characters proposed a biocontainment mechanism, which was the lysine contingency which is considering that he went to Harvard Medical School was somewhat embarrassing uh, because lysine is a terrible way of containing organisms because every food, all plants and animals contain abundant amounts of lysine. And so saying that they're confined because they can't, they have to get lysine from the factory. So the connection to me is that we developed a biocontainment method that used a different amino acid, not lysine, which is one of the 20 standard ones of President Allight. Ours is BIP A, um, which is not found in nature and has to be manufactured in a chemistry lab. The fourth is that they are using ancient DNA. So far, the limit of ancient DNA that is, uh, is a million years, which is not too bad. Uh, but I think there are ways that you can go even further back, back to the dawn of time by looking at, at the phylogenetic reconstruction of the proteins. Uh, I guess the fifth connection is, uh, since I do bioethics, this is a lesson that we've, we've well learned uh, to stay away from synthetic uh, carnivores as their first foray, making a Velociraptor T-Rex synthetic hybrid uh, is probably not uh, the best uh, starting point. Uh, herbivores would be better.